Hey guys, it's about beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Uh, we're going to start off uh, by saying I can get some of the main beer company beers down here, but they don't send their very tasty beers down here. The lunch and the dinner that was sent to me uh, were freaking awesome beers. And the ones that we get down here is like the Mean Old Tom and the Zoe, and, or Zoe, however it's pronounced, Zoe, and some of the others that are the run of the meal beers. Uh, I don't know why we don't get the lunch and the dinner down here. It's probably because they don't produce enough and it's sucked off the shelves before it can be distributed down here. But I wish we could get everything that they produce. Uh, the lunch and the dinner were sent to me fresh. And uh, I reviewed them as fresh as I could. And uh, when I went and bought some beers at the barrel chest, uh, I noticed they did have some uh, main beer company beers there, and I, I was especially noticed that the date was a fresh beer date, and it, and it was. And uh, um, previously I had reviewed some of their beers, and I had bought somewhere else, and they were way out of date. And that's the problem we have, and that's why I harp on the dating issue so much, guys. Because you can go into a beer store and find a beer like this that's been sitting on a shelf for six months, eight months, a year, year and a half, even two years. Because nobody knows about Main Beer Company here in Virginia, and they, they look at it. And if it does have a date on it, and they look at the date, and it's six months or a year or even two years old, you know, you know what they're going to do. Same thing I'm going to do. They're going to set it right back up on the shelf. So... Uh, when we can get these beers, and, and, and the craft beer industry guys uh, know that, that's why they, they are stepping up to the plate and putting these dates on there. And the beer connoisseurs, uh, the people that drink craft beers, I don't want to say connoisseurs in, in a derogatory term, but people that know that they should be buying fresh beers. Now, when you're buying a, an imperial style or something that, that's got a massive ABV, it's not really not that critical. I mean, we would like to see the year on it anyway, so we know what vintage it is, you know. Uh, and this beer is, uh, according to these guys here at uh, Rate Beer at Beer Advocate, they're saying it's 6.5. And this one here says it is 6.5. So they're both accurate. And right on the side here, it says this was done on January 27th of 2015. And it is a 6.5 percenter. So here we are into March. This beer is still going to be very tasty. Now, uh, this beer being a 6.5 six percenter, uh, and, and a stout on top of that, it's probably going to keep for a year or two. But I wouldn't want to be purchasing this when it was five years old or, or older because uh, the ABV is not going to per permit that to be a beer that should be kept for that long. And this is aged on uh, natural, it's a stout aged on natural vanilla beans. So uh, I don't know what would be deter from this from being cellared. A year or two but I don't know if I would want to sell our six and a half percent or longer than that so that's why I'm doing this one now this is this beer is a tad over two yeah it was done in January and we're in March so it's a tad over two months old uh, being put in the bottle on January the 27th uh, somewhere around two months old so still should be very tasty and very fresh and like I said I picked this up at uh, barrel chest uh, Martin and the guys out there uh, he just started this uh, his uh, his beer store back in in August, and he is very conscious about beers, and, and and has told me that he has sent beers back because they were too old when the distributors tried to deliver them to his store, and that's the way it's got to be. It, it has to be that way, and I applaud Martin and the guys out there for being conscious of that. And and Martin knows good beer, he does, and and before too long. 
I'm going to go out to Barrel Chest and introduce everybody to, uh, to Martin and uh, show you a, a little video around his store, what he's got. He's in the process of trying to get his uh, uh, shipping license to ship alcohol out. And when that happens, I will let you know. But he is uh, he's a great guy, and they got a bunch of crap. It's got a bunch of taps in there with craft beers on tap there that you can actually uh, go in there and have lunch or dinner and sip on uh, a craft beer and, and even sip on it while you're even shopping for beer. What a great idea. What a great idea that is. So uh, yeah. everybody that's in the Roanoke Valley area, you need to check out Barrel Chest. And, uh, and if you see Martin, tell him Greg from Greg's Beer Review sent you. Uh, let's get on with this one, guys. I don't want it to be a 30-minute video. Uh, this beer, it doesn't say what the IBUs is on this one on either site, and it doesn't have it on the bottle, so I really don't know uh, what it is on this one. So let's get directly over to the food pairings. This is a stout, so it's going to go well with your chocolate dishes. Cuisine is barbecue, cheeses of buttery brie, gouda, havarti, swift, your earthy cheeses, camembert, pontina, and the meat for this is beef, shellfish, smoked meat, and game. And I'll probably add grilled meat to that because I like uh, a lot of stuff off the grill with the uh, IPAs and stouts and a lot of my uh, uh, other uh, dishes that I end up at. the other half fixes for me in the evenings. So, uh, and this beer says here not recommended for extended salary. That's the reason I said that. It's a lower ABV beer. Uh, even though it's a six and a half, it's almost... Uh, to the seven percent, and uh, once you get above seven, once you get to the eight, nine, ten percenters, those beers are going to keep for a lot, lot longer, unless they have coffee infused in them or coffee added to them, which would those uh, flavors will uh, diminish over time. So, this beer uh, would probably keep for a year or two anyway. So, let's get over, and we've done the uh, food pairings, glass bar, a pint, Becker, Nonic, Tumbler, Mug, Stein, and Sidell. I got the double glass for this one. And not recommended for extended cellaring, like I said. So I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. So let me pop the cap on this bad boy. Nice hits. Very nice. I don't want a monster head, so I'm not going to pour it directly down the center. But i got a feeling it's going to produce a monster head. <laughs> Looks like yogurt up on top of it. Good three fingers of head on that aggressive pour. And this is a slightly bigger bottle than a 12 ounce. It's probably a 500 milliliter. I'm not exactly sure. It's a slightly bigger bottle. If I see it on here. I do not. Yeah, 1.9 fluid ounces. So, slightly larger bottle than a 12 ounce or so. And these beers aren't extremely cheap. Uh, I'm trying to think what I did pay for this one, but I'm pretty sure it, it wasn't very, very cheap. Uh, it was probably between the $7 and $10 range, somewhere in that area. So, let's get it over into the light and see what we got. I'm not seeing any light through this. Yeah, it's pretty damn black. It is pretty black. I'm not getting any light at all through it. So, a good representation of a style, uh, which is a stout, which... It, I consider them to be a black beer. I mean, sometimes they'll pour a little ruby red color to them and a little red tinnage to them. And if you've got a, a thinner glass, you can see some red ruby lights through there. But most of the time, they're, uh, they're kind of dark, and that's what I like about them. So let's get a nose on this one. Wow. That has got a big coffee roastiness to it. I'm getting coffee, roasted malt, some hint of some chocolate in there. Not getting the vanilla beans right off the nose. Of course, it's right out of the fridge at 40 degrees, and sometimes those flavors come out after it warms up. Well, let's give it a taste. See what we got. Cheers, everybody. I'm getting a vanilla on the taste. And uh, and on the bottle it says stout aged on natural vanilla beans. 
So you're going to get some of that. And it, like I said, as it warms up, that those aromas and flavors are going to come out more intensely. That's tasty. I'm not giving any of the alcohol at all. None. The, the, almost to the burnt roasted malt. Coffee. Some bittersweet chocolate in there. Hints of vanilla. Maybe some hints of some dark fruit. But the roasted malt and the coffee is standing out more than anything in the taste. Maybe add a little bit of that chocolate, bittersweet chocolate. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. Very nice. Look at the lacing is leaving on the glass. A great indication that this is a well made beer. Main Brewing Company does some really good stuff. We got the date on the bottle when it was put in there. Got, uh, I wish they would put the, the IBUs on here, but it's not that critical on here. And it's got a bunch of stuff written on the back of the label that I did not read, and I'm not going to read. Because it's written in very small letters. And I would have to put my Santa Claus glasses on to read it to you. And I'm sure uh, you don't want to watch a 30 minute video. So, right now we're going to take it back and sip on it for a little bit. Might fire up a little bit of a cigar to go with this. I love smoking a nice cigar with the stouts. It really pairs up well. And maybe sometime this year, during 2015, I'll do a cigar and, and a beer pairing review. I've had a lot of requests for it, but I've only been doing cigars for a year or two and uh, don't consider myself quite to the uh, expert level in that category, but... It may happen sometime this year. We'll do a, a pairing together. Probably on this style of beer, especially, since uh, the stouts go very well with a, Especially what I, I smoke now. I started off with the lighter flavored cigars, and I worked my way through the medium cigars, medium body cigars, and now I'm into the medium full and the full body cigars, especially this time of day. Uh, I smoke something a little lighter uh, during the day when I'm working, and then uh, usually an Ashton Half Corona, and then when I get home in the evening, when I do the beer reviews, uh, I'll, uh, I'll share uh, a, a nice big fatter cigar, like a, a Punch Bare Knuckle, or maybe a, a Gurkha, or, or, or a uh, Drew Estates uh, Undercrown, or, or something that's got a little bit more body to it, especially if I'm drinking something of this magnitude. So, I don't want to say magnitude, because it's only 6.5%, but something with this flavor and this and, and, and this style of beer. So, well, let's let it warm up, and uh, I'll come back and do the final chug and grade on this one, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Been sipping on this probably about 45 minutes. Very, very tasty. It's got some very nice notes in it now. Definitely giving the vanilla now that it's warmed up. On the nose and on the taste. Follow Chug. Rich, almost to the burnt characteristics of uh, roasted malt. Coffee, hints of vanilla. A little bit of coffee. Maybe some, some dark fruit mixed in it now that it's warmed up. Uh, maybe some dates, plums, figs, or raisins. Very, very tasty. Very, very tasty. A very nice example of a lower ABV, ABV stout. Uh, uh, something you can have one or two of these. Of course, this is a bigger bottle. I don't know if you'd want to have two of these big bottles by yourself. Especially if you're driving. Uh, if you're at home, absolutely. Uh, you could have two of these, or even three, if you so desire. Uh, very tasty. It went very well with the Punch Bare Knuckle Cigar, which lends uh, some nice earthy espresso cedar taste in that cigar, along with this beer, which uh, went very well together. Very, very well together. A very nice cigar pairing with this one. It's a full-bodied cigar to go with a... Uh, 
a nice full body stout. Uh, for me guys, this is a 9 out of 10. It is very, very tasty. Definitely worth picking up if uh, you can get the main beer company beers in your area. This is their Mean Old Tom. Uh, it wasn't too mean, but it was pretty tasty. It was pretty tasty. I enjoyed this one thoroughly. Oh, excuse me. Mm. That tastes even better coming back up. We'll go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 89 in their very good range. It's, it is very good. If I was putting a numeric rating on this beer, guys, I would probably give this probably a 97 or a 98, somewhere in that area. Very, very tasty. Very, very tasty. And over to uh, Rate Beer. Rate Beer says overall 99 and 99 in a style. So they're right on the borderline from giving it 100, which I am too. Uh, I don't believe that I could, I could think this beer would be even better, would be put it in a uh, bourbon barrel. <laughs> I like all these kind of beers on bourbon barrels, guys. So, we'd like to see them to put a uh, IBU on the beer so they'll know. Uh, to me, it, it doesn't seem like it's a monster IBU, somewhere in between the 50 and 70 degree uh, IBU scale. But uh, I enjoyed it very much. It's a very tasty beer. Uh, something you can have one or two of these and not uh, be faced down in the carpet of the dirt. But... Uh, It is tasty. It is tasty. I, I enjoyed this one with the cigar that I smoked. A bare knuckle, uh, punch bare knuckle cigar. So, if you have this one from Main Beer Company, they're mean old Tom. Let me know what you think. 9 out of 10 for me, guys. Let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.